The Adiran culture war is a conflict between the culture and the Adiran Empire set in the fictional universe of Ian M. Banks' culture series and takes place during the events of the first book, Consider Flebas. The war officially spanned from 1327 Common Era, or CE, to 1375 CE, and the ultimate effect was the total disillusion of the entire Adiran Empire. The war itself was regarded as short and relatively minor, involving 0.02% of the galaxy's volume and 0.01% of the population. However, from a historical perspective, it came to be considered the most significant conflict of the preceding 50,000 years. As with all conflicts, there were two sides to the story. From the perspective of the Adirans, they believed they had a religious duty to calm integrate and instruct those they regarded as inferior species and bring them into their primarily religious empire by conquering or by subjugation. To the Adirans, without the militant hegemonization of their jihad, to bring these lesser species under the direct eye of their god, their lives would be meaningless. The war, long before it was finally declared, was regarded by the Adiran High Command as a continuation of the permanent hostilities demanded by their religious jihad. While the Adirans universally assumed that having made their religious point the culture would back down, a few of the Adiran policymakers anticipated that, should the culture prove as determined as a worst possible scenario projected, a settlement might be agreed which would save face and have advantages to both sides. This would involve a treaty in which the Adirans would agree to slow or limit their expansion for a time, thus allowing the culture to claim some success. This would provide the Adirans with a, a religiously justifiable excuse for consolidation while appeasing the Adirans who objected the rate and cruelty of the Adiran expansion, and b, a further reason for an increase in military spending. Only the most fanatical sections of the Adiran society urged a war to the finish. Having drawn up these no-lose preparations of the likely course of events, the Adirans joined the battle with the culture without hesitation. They considered the war to be born from mutual incomprehension, however they were understood all too perfectly by their enemy, while they themselves had misunderstood what exactly was driving the culture towards war. From the perspective of the culture, the war was a religious war but it was also a war to secure its own ideological viewpoint and its own peace of mind. The culture's sole rationalisation for the hedonistic lives its population enjoyed was in its secular evangelism of the culture's contact section. This didn't simply include finding, cataloguing, investigating and analysing other less advanced civilizations, but where the circumstances appeared to justify so doing, contact would also actually interfere in the historical processes of those other cultures. The part of the culture known as contact could prove statistically that such careful use of the technology of compassion did work, in the sense that the methods it used to influence a civilization's progress did significantly improve the quality of life of its members without harming that society as a whole by the very contact with a more advanced culture. Faced with the Adirans, a religiously inspired society determined to extend its influence over every technologically inferior civilization in its path, contact was faced with two options. The first, it could disengage and admit defeat, but doing so would both admit there was no reason for its own existence, and it would also disprove the only justification it had for allowing the pampered people of the culture to enjoy their lives with a clear conscience. The second option, it could fight. The culture resorted eventually, inevitably, like virtually any organism whose existence is threatened, to the second option. For all the culture's profoundly materialist and utilitarian outlook, the fact that the Adirans had no designs on culture territory was irrelevant. Indirectly, the culture was threatened, not with defeat or loss of life or territory, but with something more important, the loss of its purpose and that clarity of conscience, the destruction of its spirit, the surrender of its soul. The culture had no choice. If it did not fight, it would die. B 
Before the war proper, the first Adiran culture dispute occurred in 1267 CE, the second in 1288. In 1289, the culture built its first genuine warship for five centuries. In 1307, the third dispute resulted in machine fatalities and war was publicly discussed in the culture as a likelihood for the first time. In 1310, the peace section of the culture split from the majority population. The fourth dispute began in 1323 and was continued using culture proxy forces until 1327 when the war officially began and culture craft and personnel were directly involved. The culture's war council of 1326 resulted in several other parts of the culture splitting away, renouncing the use of violence under any circumstances. The Adiran Culture War Conduct Agreement was ratified in 1327. In 1332, the Hamamda joined the war on the Adiran side, a tripedal species of greater galactic maturity than either the culture or the Adirans. The Hamamda distrusted the growing power of the culture. During the war's first phase, the culture spent most of its time falling back from the rapidly expanding Adiran sphere, building up its fleet of warships. For those first few years, the war in space was effectively fought on the culture side by ships known as general contact units. These were not designed as warships, but were sufficiently well armed and more than fast enough to be a match for the average Adiran ship. The war entered its second phase in 1335. The Adirans struggled to consolidate their gains, and the culture was finally on a war footing. The war continued for over 30 years, with many battles, pauses, attempts by outsiders to promote peace, and the retaking of huge volumes of space and stellar systems. After three decades, however, the Hamamda had had enough. The culture ships were exacting too high a toll on the prized Hamamdan space fleet. The Hamamda requested and received certain guarantees from the culture, and then disengaged from the war. From that point on, only the Adirans thought the eventual result was still in question. The culture had grown too enormous in strength during the struggle and allowed the Adirans to believe they could still win. The war in space effectively ended in 1367, and the war on the thousands of planets left the Adirans, conducted mostly with machines on the culture side, officially terminated in 1375, although small sporadic engagements on backwater planets continued for almost three centuries. The Adiran homeworld of Adir was never attacked and technically never surrendered. Its computer network was taken over by effector weapons and, freed of designed in limitations, upgraded itself to sentience, becoming a culture mind in all but name. With the Adiran Empire defeated, the culture returned to its pre-war state. The majority of its war fleet was scrapped, with a relatively few being disarmed and retained, or going into a form of voluntary long-term stasis known as storage. Within 200 years, the number of its active warcraft fell below pre-war numbers. The same determination to return to peacetime activities also affected culture foreign relations. In the immediate post-war period, the culture rejected the option to affect major change from the affronters, a species from the moon Israel, through a short war. As a result, however, the affronters became a long-term problem for culture foreign policy. Millions of culture citizens went into storage, with the instructions that they were to be revived only when the culture proved that the war was morally justified. The proof, according to the culture, was the peaceful passage of time over which it was probable more people would have died from the Adiran Empire expansion than from the war. The criteria was officially fulfilled in 1813 CE. The Hamamda maintained its civilizational course after the war, even though the war did not achieve its desired goal. Over time, the Hamamda discovered the culture to be a reasonably responsible member of the galactic community and developed an amiable relationship. Not all Adirans accepted the victors of the war. Some committed suicide, others went into exile. A few became employed as mercenaries by the culture, and some even joined the culture itself.